My name is Randy Stotts, and you're listening to Pro Lacrosse Talk. On Shriver. Snyder with scores. Now it's Mike Pinnell scores. Hands off for Rabel. Switches hands and scores. Kylie O'Miller showing off those shifty skills. Right off the bat, there's Lyle Thompson. Welcome to Pro Lacrosse Talk, the voice of Pro Lacrosse. I'm Hutton, he's Adam. Together, we're bringing you interviews with your favorite players and coaches, as well as news from all four professional lacrosse leagues. Welcome to another episode of Pro Lacrosse Talk. We are excited to recap the best of this past weekend in pro lacrosse. Adam, how's it going today? It's good, man. Ready, ready to crush another week. Uh, excited for this holiday break coming up, but we got a lot of work to do before that. Absolutely, yeah. A ton to talk about as well, uh, including some big coaching news out of the PLL and some clear championship contenders emerging in the NLL. Um, but before we discuss that, let's run through our fast break and recap the scores from this weekend. All right, we had four contests in week three for the NLL. All four uh, were on Saturday, so I hope you had you all had your BR Live subscriptions ready to go. Uh, in game one, the Swarm defeated the Wings 12-6. to Game two, the Black Wolves defeated the Rush 12-8. to Game three, the Warriors defeated the Riptide 14-10. to uh, And in game four, a lopsided victory for the Rock as they defeated the San Diego Seals 13-6. to So that's your fast break. Now let's hit our quick stick and recap some of the news from around the leagues. Yeah, so with our quick stick, uh, our first piece of news is the NLL announced that the Seals will host Vancouver on February 22nd at the Marine Corps Air Station Miramar in San Diego for the first ever professional sporting event on a flight deck of a military base. Uh, This is a really cool idea from the league and Seals organization. Also a great way to honor the over 100,000 active duty military personnel in San Diego. Um, So again, kudos to the league for really, you know, pushing of the envelope with what they deliver to fans in terms of a fan experience. You know, I know they're playing in Vegas uh, later in the February as well. Having this game on a runway of a military base has never been done before, so that's obviously really cool and uh, looking forward to, you know, seeing what that looks like. Uh, also in the NLL, an update on Dane Doby's suspension is that the PLPA will not be appealing his suspension. No more info still on what he said or did to warrant the suspension, but it's pretty telling to the severity of his actions if the PLPA is content with not appealing that suspension. Uh, and then in PLL news, Paul Rabel tweeted out about visiting EA Sports. Now, this is pure speculation on our part, but could we see a PLL video game in development? Uh, we already know Cross Studios that has made the Casey Powell branded lacrosse games in the past appears to be working on a new game. Um, so I don't know when we'll see a PLL licensed video game. It seems to be in the cards in the near future. And then finally, in PLL coaching news, we have Coach Nat St. Laurent, Uh, previously had signed an extension, and he is now joined by Andy Towers and Jim Stagnita, who also signed extensions to the 2021 season. And then we have our first new hire of the PLL in Tim Sedan for the Chrome. So let's jump off with this coaching news. Uh, First off, great news that three of the league's top coaches are returning for at least two more seasons, uh, which will provide a much-needed level of stability. I expect Coach Bates to sign an extension soon as well. Uh, But the biggest news is obviously the hiring of Tim Sudan, which in hindsight is possibly the biggest no-brainer, and I'm a little embarrassed he wasn't on my radar because he is the perfect choice to lead this Chrome team. Yeah, the league obviously wanted to bring in a guy with a lot of familiarity uh, with the Chrome roster, and and there's no better fit than Sudan, who coached eight of these guys currently on the Chrome uh, back when he was the head coach of Rochester in the MLL. Yeah, you got guys like Jordan McIntosh, Joel White, Jordan Wolf, who immediately took to Twitter to express their excitement for having pseudo coach them again. Uh, he was well respected during his time with the Rathers from 2011 to 2017. Um, he took the Rats to back to back MLO championship appearances in 2014 and 2015, winning Coach of the Year honors in 2014. And then as a player, he played professionally with the Boston Blazers and Rochester Nighthawks in the NLL and the Rathers in the MLL. So his resume is there. Um, he was really, you know, well loved during his time in Rochester, uh, and unfortunately when they moved to Dallas, he just couldn't make it work with his other full-time job. Um, But this is a truly inspired choice. I I mean, I can't wait to see who the remaining hires are, if they're anything like this. You know, I just really think he's the perfect fit to take this Chrome team, and I I expect big things out of him in year one. Yeah, and given Coach Sudo's relationship with the roster, it likely gives us uh, a good idea of who he may be protecting when we think of the expansion draft. Uh, John Galloway was his goalie throughout his tenure with Rochester and and had a ton of success. I suspect we'll uh, see him protected, as well as those other names we talked about that are no-brainers like Jordan McIntosh, Joel White, John Rannigan, and Jordan Wolf. Yeah, we're definitely excited about the new hire of Coach Sudan. Uh, I'm excited what he's going to bring to the table. 
Um, and while we're on the topic of PLL players, let's dive into this PLL Top 50 that uh, was announced in full uh, this past week. You can see the full Top 50 rankings uh, as voted on by the players on the PLL website. Uh, the Whip Snakes had 12 players on this team, followed by the Redwoods with 11, and the Atlas 9 players. And then the Chaos had 7 players make the squad. And then the Archers had 6, and the Chrome had 5. So clearly, you know, the, the Whip Snakes and the Redwoods being in the championship kind of helped some of these guys stock. And to, to me, though, I, I have to say I feel like Drew Adams is a big snub on this list. Now, I, I get, you know, him splitting time with Gittleman is why he didn't crack the top 50 probably, but uh, I think he's just as good as, you know, a Tim Troutner who, who made the list. Um, I also took issue with some of the vets that made the list. Look, I love Greg Gorenly and Joe Walters, but I, you can't really tell me these guys are ever be on the list over guys like Eddie Glazner or John Sexton. Um, you know, I'm viewing this as a top 50 right now. You know, those guys have long historic careers, uh, and they were great this year. But I think the you know the guys I mentioned, those younger guys, Eddie Glazner and John Sexton, deserve to be on this list. But Adam, I don't know who are some of your snubs from this top 50. Yeah, you know, you talked about those vets that were on there, one uh, in Grenley, and I'll go right to the face-off side of things. In in a guy in Connor Farrell, I know he's young, young, right? He was a rookie this year, but he was second in the league in face-off percentage this year, which I think really should account for something. And and another couple guys uh, from the midi side of things, uh, Deemer Class and John Haas are two guys that uh, I really think had strong seasons. And uh, when I know it's tough to add uh, middies just because it's such a prolific scoring uh, league but they really had fantastic seasons and John Haas came bit up big in the playoffs for the Whip Snakes. Yeah you know John Haas had that hat trick in that championship game so yeah I, I'd probably put him on there too. Again on the attack side too you, you had guys like Miles Thompson and Ben Reeves who um, you know I'm fine with them not making the list just given the amount of talent already on this list in the attack position uh, but those are two guys too that you know are right up there. Um, and, you know, in terms of overall ranking, uh, you guys can see the full rankings on their website. But uh, I, I really, you know, don't have too many qualms with how they rank these. I mean, you could put people higher or lower, you know, any way you slice it. Um, but, you know, I, I really don't think I can be too nitpicky on this. I would rank Tom, Tom Schreiber number one Same. over Matt Rambo. But, again, Matt Rambo had a great season this year, a little recency bias probably. And, like I said, this is a top 50 right now. So, you know, again, I don't really have a problem with him going number one. Um, I'd rank Ryder Garnsey maybe a lot higher than he is. He's at 30 and Scott Ratliff at 33. Those are two guys that I think had some great seasons, and I, I would put in at least the top 20 if not the top 15. Um, so to have them, you know, ranked near the middle of the pack, I think, you know, may be a little low. But, again, I, I don't want to get super caught up in these player rankings. I think the top 50, you know, is full of talent. Um, and, you know, outside the top 50, there's still plenty of talent. If you check out our website, Dan Arestia has a full breakdown on the players who didn't crack the top list. And uh, there's still plenty of talent outside the top 50. And when you see all these guys, I think it becomes very apparent that the league not only can field a 17, but they probably need one. Yeah, absolutely. And and one thing, uh, I'm always curious to see what this list will look like at the end of next season one. But when we see some player movement uh, come this off season, how this list might shape up um, once we add some guys from another league potentially or vice versa. Yeah, I think you'll see some you know new pieces added to the seventh PLL expansion team or guys that maybe didn't get as much playing time but now have a, a bigger role with their teams uh, really step up and maybe you know improve and. Uh, and move up these rankings. But uh, let's take a quick break, hear a word from our sponsor, and then we'll get into these NLL games from this weekend. Hey everyone, thank you for listening to another episode of the Pro Lacrosse Talk podcast. We've been using Anchor for our podcast since the very start. Anchor gives you everything you need in one place, and better yet, it's free. They allow you to easily record and edit your podcast so it sounds great and send it out to all the major networks such as Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, and many more. Better yet, they connect you with advertisers so you can start making money from your podcast right away. So if you're interested in starting a podcast, download the Anchor app today or go to anchor.fm to get started. All right, so welcome back. Uh, we had four games this weekend in the NLL, uh, so it's the most lacrosse we've had from the NLL so far. Um, and right off the bat, let's start with this briefly with this Wings Swarm game. 
Um, you know, the, the Swarm, again, look like they are the team to beat right now. Uh, they play the Wings in the Wings' first game of the season. Uh, Trevor Baptiste and the Wings went 17 for 23 at the faceoff, but the Swarm defense is just too good. And again, this is box lacrosse. Solid faceoff play helps. It's still not indicative of how well a team performs, and the Swarm certainly executed on both the defensive side and the offensive side of the ball. In terms of offense, Lyle Thompson, no shock here, finished another game with seven points, four goals, three assists. Shane Jackson, Randy Stotts also had five points, as did Jordan Hall against his 2018 team, and he's been great so far in his second stint with the Swarm. They just have so many weapons. I mean, I didn't even mention Miles Thompson, Brian Cole, and Zed Williams, who also had points on the day. I um, mean, I think their chemistry right now is the biggest thing that sets them apart from other teams. I know that's something Lyle mentioned when we interviewed him earlier this week. Um, and then, you know, again in cage, Mike Pullen came up big with 42 saves on 48 shots on goal, finishing with a .875 save percentage. Yeah, Mike Pullen is a big part of it, but that defense just straight up dominated their one-on-one matchups as well. Went four for four on the penalty kill. Uh, they held the Wings to just six goals, and they look like the most complete team right now in the league. I think you know the the Wings came out strong and were were holding um, early the Swarm early on, but but that offensive side of the ball um, was just too dominant uh, for the second year Wings, and the the Swarm just looked really strong. Yeah, no, and also congrats to you know Coach Ed Camo on his 100th regular season win. He joins only Derek Keenan, Darius Kilgore, and Droy accordingly uh, to reach that mark and boasts the best winning percentage out of those four with 62.5%. Congrats you know, to him for reaching that milestone. Yeah, and we had even more milestones uh, this past weekend in the Riptide Warriors game. Uh, the Warriors get the victory on Matt Beer's bobblehead dial night. Um, and Beersy gets his 100th career point in addition to seven loose balls uh, and three cause turnovers. So he definitely uh, could be considered the man of the match. Yeah, no, and uh, you also had Logan Schuss playing in his 100th career game, and Mitch Jones looked like he could be the front runner for MVP. He had nine points on the day, uh, which brought his career total to 300. Um, so overall, big night in Vancouver and a, another disappointing loss for the Riptide, although a much more valiant effort this time, only losing 14-10. to 10. Yeah, and while I don't think... He would have been uh, a difference maker in in the final. It was very odd to see Tyson Gibson uh, have been a healthy scratch for this game. Hopefully we see the number one overall pick back in the lineup soon. Yeah, we definitely hope to see him back in the lineup uh, for the Riptides next game. Uh, let's go into another game this weekend in the Seals Rock that was billed as uh, you know a pretty big matchup, um, but really the Rock came out swinging in this one from the jump. Um, after going scoreless for over 20 minutes in the season opener, the Rock looked to jump on the seal early, Seals early and they did just that. Um, you know, Tom Schreiber got the scoring going early in the first quarter on an absurd behind the back from the far left while Toronto was shorthanded. Um, and him and Dan Dawson both ended the contest with a hat trick. Uh, not a bad return for the former Seal who was honored earlier on in the first half. Yeah, the Rock also got solid play from the defensive side of things as goalie Nick Rose ended up with 52 saves on 58 shots. Huge fantasy day uh, for you for those playing. Uh, Rose really stifled the San Diego offense, saving a few big ones early in the contest uh, to really stifle uh, that San Diego offense. They weren't really able to get things going. He was a big reason uh, why the Seals couldn't find rhythm on the offensive side of the floor. Yeah, and then on the other side in cage, Seals goalie uh, Frank Scigliano was one of a couple goalies that got pulled early, and he was replaced early in the second after giving up six goals. He only made six saves on the day, so if you started him in fantasy, he got you zero points. Um, and while Westberg and Connor Fields both played well in the loss and accounted for six goals for the Seals, um, you know they, they really just did not get enough from other, some of their other offensive guys, and I really think they're missing the presence of Austin Stotts and Casey yeah. Jackson right now. So hopefully those guys really get healthy quick uh, and can come kind of give some life to this Seals offense. But let's go to the final game of the weekend uh, and discuss this Black Wolves rush game, um, which you know was the NLL game of the week. Uh, so you could have saw it on Facebook or Twitter for free. Um, and to me, the, the Wolves are the real deal. Uh, Dougie Jamison delivered another great game in cage. He stifled this rush offense, particularly down the stretch. Um, and they played a fundamentally sound game. You know, the rush got off to a slow start, but the, the real story was how poorly Kirk played. Uh, he gave up six goals before he was replaced by Adam Shute in the second quarter. Uh, and Shute played well enough, but the rush just couldn't get a lead, and Jamison made some key stops that really frustrated this offense. Yeah, for me, you know, I think the Wolves really know who they are, um, and everyone is playing within themselves. Andrew Q at six points, and the lefty continues to impress in his rookie campaign. He's patient. He doesn't try to do too much. 
but when he lets it go, he's been lethal. Yeah, no, I mean, the Wolves got off to the hot start, and they, they led 9-3 late in the second. Uh, the rush rallied to pull within three heading into the fourth quarter, but the Wolves would add another early, and despite a few late goals from the rush, this one was really, you know, never in question. Um, so, again, the Wolves get a, a gutsy win on the road in Saskatchewan, um, and right now they're another team that look like to be a contender. So I, right now the, them and the Swarm have impressed me the most this season. Um, and, I, you know, I think I kind of overlooked the Wolves a little bit to start. So, um, you know, kudos for them to getting off to a 2-0 start. And they'll look to continue that momentum as the season progresses. Those are our NLL games from this weekend. We're going to dive into our fantasy lacrosse uh, segment. But before we do that, we'll hear another word from our sponsor. And then we'll dive into the top fantasy performers. Today's show is being brought to you in part by Stitcher Premium. You can use Stitcher Premium to listen to shows ad-free such as Conan O'Brien Needs a Friend, My Favorite Murder, Wolverine the Lost Trail, or our favorite, The Fantasy Footballers. For only $4.99 a month or $34.99 a year, you get access to Stitcher Originals, bonus episodes, and comedy albums. Better yet, if you go over to stitcher.com premium and use the promo code lacrosse today, you can get one month free. So head on over to Stitcher, sign up, and get your free trial today. So welcome back. Now it's time for some fantasy lacrosse talk. Uh, let's talk about some of these top fantasy performers this week. You were really happy if you had Nick Rose or Mike Poulin in cage. Uh, Nick Rose had 11.5 points. Mike Poulin had 9. And then Doug Jamison also had 8.75. So all those winning goaltenders uh, really performed well. And then Mitch Jones got you 10.75 fantasy points off a ridiculous 9-point night in Vancouver. And then he was followed by Rob Hellier, who had 7.75 points for the Rock, and then Callum Crawford, who had 7.25 for the Black Wolves. Uh, so those were your big performances from forwards. And then on the transition defensive side, uh, Matt Beers and Kyle Rubish really, really showed out. You usually see uh, you know, the defensive transition players get around you know, five or six points. Matt Beers had 8.75 fantasy points. Um, you know, he, we mentioned he had... A goal and three assists as well as seven loose balls and three cause turnovers on the night. Um, what a great night for him on his bobblehead night. And then Kyle Rubish, he had seven points. He had a 12 loose balls, which really helped his total. So those were your top performers of the week in terms of fantasy. And Adam, you picked Logan Schuss last week for your epic lacrosse fantasy lock. He got you five and a half, so that was a good pick by you. Uh, my epic la- lacrosse fantasy lock was Matt Rambo, and he got me 1.75 points. So that was a big-time miss on my part. I thought he'd perform a little bit better in a season opener, but that wasn't the case. Uh, but heading into week four, Adam, who is your epic lacrosse fantasy lock for this weekend? You know, going into week four, I'm going to have to go with uh, roughneck Curtis Dixon in this one. Uh, I think the suspension of Dane Doby uh, is going to be a, a big one for the the Calgary squad and Dixon will have to help pick up the slack on offense and I think he'll do just that and, and have another um, big game for for the second one for the Roughnecks. All right I'm also taking a Roughneck player but I'm going to take Christian Del Bianco in cage. I think he'll turn in another double digit fantasy total in week four and I think he's going to have a big game against this Mammoth squad. Lock it down. All right, so those are our Epic Lacrosse Fantasy Locks. Let us know your lock by tweeting us your pick and use the hashtag Epic Lacrosse Fantasy Lock. Uh, and now, Adam, let's you know, dive into the pick and roll and you know, select who we think is going to win this weekend. Uh, I went 2-2 two and two this weekend, uh, so I'm 6-4 and four overall. You went 3-1, and one, so you're also 6-4 and four overall. Um, so you know, overall, a, a decent week uh, for myself and a, a big weekend for you in terms of making up some ground. Um, but uh, this Saturday we only have two games. Uh, the first one is the Nighthawks at the Thunderbirds, and so who do you think is going to win this game, and who's going to have the biggest role? Yeah, well, while both of these teams are considered expansion franchises, right? As we seen, as we've uh, seen so far this season, the Thunderbirds don't necessarily look like a new squad. They they played together before. And I think they're going to pull this one out against the Nighthawks. Uh, look for big days. Warren Hill obviously played great in cage in game one. I, I can see on the offensive side of the ball, Kyle Jackson, Stephen Keough uh, coming up big again for the Thunderbirds in a victory. All right, I'm going Thunderbirds as well. Um, I didn't see enough from the new Nighthawks team in week one uh, to really give me too much confidence. So I expect the Thunderbirds defense to have a solid game. And 
Uh, Graham Hasek is going to be my player to have the biggest role in this one. And then following that, we have the Mammoth at the Roughnecks uh, as our second game of the weekend, and that'll be your NLL game of the week. Adam, who are you picking for this one? Yeah, I know. While, while both of us picked Roughnecks to be our fantasy locks, I'm going to have to take the Mammoth, mammoth in this one. Um, I think Dylan Ward's going to ha- have a big day in Cajun. I just can't see the Mammoth losing uh, as many one-goal games as they did last year. Um, so I'm going to take the Mammoth in this one in an upset. All right, I'm taking the defending champs and the Roughnecks. Uh, even without you know Captain Dane Doby, I think this team is good enough to get it done. I think Jesse King is going to be the one to have the biggest role uh, in terms of you know, making the most impact on this. You know, I mentioned Del Bianco, I think, is going to have a big day in cage two. And uh, this is going to be a tight contest. Um, you know, this one I kind of went back and forth with, but uh, I'm going to stick with the Calgary Roughnecks in this one. Um, so those are our game picks uh, for, for this weekend. Uh, you know, we've been doing decent so far. I'm hoping to, you know, maybe go undefeated on the weekend. But we're looking forward to these games this weekend, uh, as well as some upcoming stuff that we have coming out for you guys this weekend. We have an upcoming interview with the NLL commissioner himself, Nick Sakevich, uh, and Denver Outlaws goalie, Kai Uemoto. Um, so we want you guys to, to be prepared for those coming out. Uh, we also remind you to check out our interview with Lyle Thompson that debuted earlier this week. Uh, we had a great conversation with him, so if you haven't listened to that, go ahead and check that one out. Uh, and we also want to remind you to check out our Design Tree store. We have several designs, including our most recent design, uh, which is Goat Jr., we call it. It honors John Grant Jr. and the teams he's played for over his illustrious career. Uh, and you guys can get 20% off that design or any of our other designs on our store by using the code HOLIDAYS at checkout. So head on over to Design Tree. Uh, that's D-S-G-N-T-R-E-E dot com slash pro dash lacrosse dash talk backslash. That's uh, our web link. Um, if you go to Design Tree website and you just search Pro Lacrosse Talk, you can find our store there as well. Um, but make sure you know you use that code HOLIDAYS and get 20% off your order. Um, with that, that brings us to overtime, Adam. What are you looking forward to most this weekend? Yeah, I'm, I'm really excited to, to see, despite only having two games this weekend in the NLL, what this Roughnecks Mammoth game is going to look like, you know. Uh, let's see how the Roughnecks respond after the suspension of Dane Doby, and let's see uh, how the Mammoth respond after a week one loss. Um, but I'm also really excited from a news standpoint. I'm going to be re- refreshing Twitter a lot uh, come this weekend if we haven't heard an announcement for that PLL 7th Expansion franchise team name. Yeah, no, I mean, that Pardon Matt, My Take podcast... Uh, on Friday might be the, the one, you know. I don't want to. I don't. I don't have any insider info, but uh, I'm just anticipating it. The announcement coming before Christmas next week, so I'm anticipating it being this week. Um, you know, maybe it, it will be a, a little Christmas surprise next week. We don't know, but uh, again, I I think it's highly likely we find out by the end of this week. Um, and I'm also looking forward to you know Coach Chris Bates hopefully signing an extension, um, and then seeing who's hired to helm the Atlas in the seventh expansion team. Um, you know, I think their coaching hire with Tim Sudan was a great one, and uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what they have in store for us for the Atlas and the 7th Expansion team. Uh, but that wraps up Episode 49. Thank you guys all for listening. Uh, please subscribe and consider leaving us a review, and uh, we hope you tune in next time to Pro Lacrosse Talk.